Hi, I'm LaTanya Jr. and welcome to TCB 360 Smart Business TV for Small Businesses. I have to tell you, I just completed the radio show and I was recording the radio show, TCB360.com radio show and also our TV show at the same time and I'm so new at this, I, <laughs> I deleted the television show. So I'm going to start over and I'm going to um, condense the show that you'll hear on the radio. If you want to hear more about the subject I'm about to speak on, don't forget to visit Live 65, iTunes, and of course, www.tcb360.com, and you'll hear about customer equity and length. And it's critical because it's one of those areas of your business that you absolutely must know. It's one of the new uh, tools, insights, processes, planning, depending on what country, what you call it. But it's new to the marketing world. And as you know, we call everything modern marketing now, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to give you an example of why and how a big company made a huge mistake and how understanding customer equity will save you as a small business. As a matter of fact, it's a tipping point for so many other areas of your business. Again, this is one of those intersections. If you know how to look both ways and take your time, and get it right, it will repair any poor destinations or areas you were in, but it'll absolutely put you on the right track until you get to the next intersection. So first off, let me tell you what customer equity is. Customer equity is, is the length of the lifetime of the value of the customer. Remember uh, last week, if you missed the radio show, go to tcb360.com and we spoke about lifetime value. And there's a great company in New York, in Connecticut, called Stu Leonard. Stu Leonard is a grocery store. And this is how Stu measured his company. And this is how he's been so successful. So successful that he's actually expanded his business 29 times. There's 29 construction projects to expand his business. He has four, restaurants, four grocery stores that also serve food. And this is how he looks at each customer. He said the average customer spends $100 a week, 50 weeks out of the year. Okay? $100 a week, 50 weeks out of the year. The average customer lives in his neighborhood for 10 years, which means every customer that enters his store are worth $50,000. If, if you looked at your customer and you said they're worth $50,000, your value, your needs, and your wants, and you will continue to develop new products and services for them. Also, you can look at your sponsors, collaboration, and any relationships that's connected to your business. Remember, we, the new definition of marketing is not just the marketing department. It's every authentic touch point, vendors, and so on, etc. What's the value or the equity of that vendor? And all of that is going to drive you to making sure that you can have a share of purse. Stu Leonard, he's looking for a share of purse. Lexus was looking for a share of garage. They're looking for getting one of their cars to share your garage. And for the average Lexus automobile dealer, the average customer is worth $600,000. But here's the aha. When you look at your business, do you measure only based on market share? You know I talk a lot about market share on our radio show. But you, you say, listen, what's my market share? That's going to drive everything. My share of market. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. Market share is huge and it's important. But let me give you a balancing act. If you look at market share, you'll make a huge mistake. If you look at it only as a measuring the profitability of your company. Remember, we're looking at what you can make now and what you're going to make in your future. And we're not going to get all into, well, I'm going to get 10,000 new customers a month, 100, 100 customers a month. We're going to look at your best friend customers, the friends that absolutely should be there. You uh, have what they need, your products and services, and to a solution. And that's where you are. Those are the customers we're going to look at. And we're going to calculate this. Just take a simple formula. Whatever you sell, just line it up in like an Excel chart and put a formula there and says, listen, these are my really good, good customers. We're going to talk about those other customers in the next show. I'm going to flip this show so it's a little easier to watch. <laughs> you 
you listen to the radio show, you get a much expanded uh, show, much more expanded show with both of these subjects. But we're going to stay with customer equity. So if you slice them up and put them up on a simple Excel chart or just square, you'll immediately get to understand your profitability. And a company by the name of Calac, which is an, it's an extraordinary automobile in the United States. I have to tell you, in the 60s and 70s, Calac, up until 1976, owned 51% of their share of market in luxurious cars. Now that's huge. And it, it was a lot to brag about. And they were very bodacious about bragging. They thought they had it made in the shade. They knew people would get to a certain age and to feel that they had arrived and were successful, he bought a Cadillac. But here's what a big smart company, what they didn't do. They didn't focus on how the world was transformed. They didn't look at how many more new customers. I guess they didn't think about, oh, there are other new luxurious cars, but who cares? We're the ultimate, we're the granddaddy of luxuriating. <laughs> Affordable, a luxurious car automobile. So this is what they did. They said market share, market share, market share. Can you imagine? Here's the ticker. The average Cadillac customer in 1976 was 60 years old. Which meant when they look at the air equity, think about it, when you invest in a house, an equity in a home, the, the longer you keep it and you keep it up, it's worth more. But that was the ticket the longer you keep it. Well, if most of their customers were 60 years old, how many more cars would they have to buy over their lifetime? How about one? And normally that was it. The one they purchased at 60, maybe they pushed it to 70. And that became a problem because they measured their profitability on the share of market that they owned. They lost sight of the fact that they didn't have customers over a lifetime because their customers were aging out of their product. And then all of a sudden, we got this new market of young people. Then people are going to college. Their wealth is increasing. They want to be hip and cool. There's a lot more social things for them to do. And they want to transform themselves into young, successful, luxuriating, vigorous consumers. And what happens? BMW, which is a no-name brand at the time, walks into America to listen, you guys can have the 60 plus. They're not going to be around that much. You're going to lose profitability. We can see your market shrinking right in front of our eyes. We're going to dominate the market and we're going to step in and we're going to take over the youth market. Yeah, we want the young people and we want the young money. And what's going to happen is we're going to make a, a great luxurious car for young people. But then over time, we're going to add to our brand category. See where I'm going with this? And there are those customers that can afford the $30,000 car, and then they're going to be the ones that can afford the 150 plus. And you're not going to have to go away. You're going to love BMW. You're going to be right by you, and you're going to grow up with this car. And we'll be able to measure not only our current profitability, but our future. Our future profitability. And that is what customer equity is. And that is huge for small businesses because the current time, a lot of small businesses are having challenges because they looked at the here and now only. And they figured that they would just follow what the big guy was doing. Say, hey, when the big guy moves after he makes a decision, then we'll just pretty much do whatever the big guy does. Not paying attention to the fact that they are the nimble gatekeepers in the community. They're the ones that drive the market. They're the ones that pretty much own this whole area of customer relationships. No one is as intimate with this marketplace in a small business. Of course, there's no such thing as a big business without small business. Big business represents less than 3 to 5% of our world employment and funds. It's the small businesses that take all of these products and services and drive them to the marketplace. And don't forget, this is a tool that you can use when deciding what kind of corporate sponsors you want. Partnerships, collaborations. Okay? Hi there, I'm LaTanya Jr. Some of you may or may not know.